Would your name be Townsend? That is your name, isn't it? Go to the devil with thee. <laughs> did you or did you not try to set fire to my stable one hour ago? Thee know I did. Then you plead guilty. Is that an act of good or an act of arson? This is no trial and thee are no judge. Oh, thee will find me guilty, but God will do the punishing. It's a ringing and eloquent statement, young Mr. Townsend. Thee has quite a tongue in thy big mouth. <laughs> now, in my language, let the following register in that religious head of yours. Your people have planted fence posts, strung wire, and built houses on my land. You've been told to get off that land, and you've been given plenty of time to do so. Now, if you choose not to, quietly, pack up and load your wagon and leave of a cool morning, you will wake up in the dead of night with your shirt tails on fire and no wheels for your wagons. Now, perhaps you're sufficiently well-versed in that Bible of yours to know that when a commandment is broken, you have to be punished. Now, you've tried to destroy another man's property. You have to take the consequences. Since you're so young, I'll be lenient with you. I'll give you much more of a chance than you deserve. All right, I'll try to speak in your language. You tried to burn us out. Then you sent your bullies to beat up our men. And the land that you claim is yours was lying unused. It was fallow until we took it and farmed it and made things grow on it. In the eyes of God, that land belongs to us. And no whipping, and no burning, and no killing will ever change that. You're an evil man, Macomb. You have no God. Sloan, give the boy your gun. My, my, my faith prohibits the use of violence against men. Place it on the floor in front of him. Now, I want you to pick that gun up, Mr. Townsend. You seem to have an obsession about vengeance, retribution, and justice. At least you bleat about it with dull regularity. Now, you don't have to bleat about it anymore. I'm going to give you a chance to be the right arm of the Lord. I'll let you pick that gun up, cock it, and aim it before I make one move to my holster. They know I, I cannot use a gun. It's forbidden me. They had best shoot. I cannot break our covenant. Just run along home, Mr. Townsend, and you tell those stiff-necked defenders of the faith that a miracle happened. Only tell them it didn't come from an angel, it came from a comb. It doesn't make it a habit of killing young boys. Sloan, you pick a friend, take him out in the street and remove some of his skin. I don't want his squatter friends to misconstrue an act of charity for a lapse in discipline. Sam. You don't want to go out in the street? You're blocking the door, mister. You're keeping my boys from doing their job. I'm keeping your boys from their pleasure, which doesn't have to be my pleasure. Well, just what happens to be your pleasure? Let this lad off without being torn to pieces by your two bully boys here who might uh, cripple him for life. I understand your point. My point is that the boy has to be punished. Perhaps you'd like to stand in for him. I already have. Or would you like your beating in here or outside? What's your pleasure? <laughs> he looks a little big for just fist. We might have to make this one more complete. How does that suit you? That's your pleasure. 
Let's get on with the business. No, please, please. I, I can suffer the beating, but if, if this came to a death, it would be on my conscience. Don't let it bother you, son. I've got a big conscience, big enough for the two of us. Now you better step aside, huh? gentlemen one or two at a time let's let's take off the guns change of heart huh fair enough Clever, mister. Very fast. Oh, please. <laughs> Patience. You and I may have a go at it yet, if necessary. I'll have a cross the square at the boarding house, if you find it necessary. Come on, son, let's get out of here. Simon Townsend, uh, may we come in? Come on in. Thank you. M Mr. Colton, this is uh, my father and uh, Mr. Loden. Mr. Colton. We are indebted to thee for what thee did to save my son. No, it was nothing. Did you sit down? Uh, thank thee, no. Uh, we got thy name from the manager. I. I hope we didn't intrude. Not at all. Uh, hope you don't mind if I uh, finish my shaving, huh? Please continue, Mr. Colton. We've come not just to express appreciation. There is something else. Yes, go on. We are of a religious faith from the East. We arrived here after months of traveling. We settled on land outside of the town, land which was then unused. We offered to pay Mr. McComb for this land. He would not even speak of it. But we have no other place to go, Mr. Colton. Our trek out here was full of death and disease. Our people are tired now. Mr. McComb has burned our barns, killed off our livestock, and now he threatens to burn us out completely. Frankly, we are at our wit's end, Mr. Colton. Were you, uh, you asking my advice? McComb is a tyrant. He is that and worse. Though my son's attempt at an act of vengeance was a sinful act, I cannot but understand the desperation that prompted it. Gentlemen, I'm afraid there are times when you have to fight fire with fire. Beyond that, uh, I don't know what I can tell you. Then, to the point of our coming here, Mr. Colton, we are forbidden any act of violence by the tenets of our faith. So... We will pay thee if thee will perform the act of violence for us. What my father and Mr. Loden cannot bring themselves to say quite clearly 
I will say for them. We want thee to kill Macomb. Will thee? Will thee kill Macomb? How much are you willing to pay, Mr. Townsend? We could collect maybe a hundred dollars. Surely that much, possibly more. A hundred dollars? Well, that's a... Uh, that's a fair amount of money. Yeah, a fair amount. Considering it's just one man, you want killed. kill. Will thee do it, Mr. Colton? Will I kill a man for a hundred dollars? Would you? Are your father? Are you, Mr. Loden? But, Mr. Colton, we have not the right... Nor have I, Mr. Loden. Not for a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, or any amount. Judge a man, son, but judge him properly. Yeah, I shot those two men this afternoon, but it was because they would have killed me. For the moment, I'll live with it because, well, I think it was right and proper. There was no other alternative. But murder for pay, gentlemen. Well, you better check with someone else in another room. I'm not your man. Well, what have we here? A delegation? Thy concern, sir? A committee of you visiting a gunman in his boarding house rooms? Who else's concern would that be, Mr. Loden? Your son tried to burn down my stable today. He received a few bruises for his efforts. He would have been considerably more bruised if it hadn't been for that gentleman in there. His efforts in your behalf left me with two wounded men. I make an assumption now, gentlemen. The smell of blood, it's a little exciting, isn't it? A worm turning instead of a cheek is somewhat satisfying, isn't it? You will know the truth, Mr. Macomb. My son and my friend here and I visited Mr. Colton with an idea that was conceived in sin. Properly, we were turned away. This man Colton has told us that he is no killer and no hard gun, as it should be. Just what would it do to set you off, Brother Townsend? What would it take? What can another man do to make you act like a... a man? If I were to tell you, for example, that you're nothing but a sanctimonious Bible-spouting hyena, hides behind a woman's skirts in the Old Testament because you're a coward. Could you rise to the occasion? I said, could you rise to the occasion? Hold! You disappoint me, Brother Townsend. Far less satisfying running a jackal off my land than a man Can a piece of earth be so precious to thee that thee would make enemies of men and women? Who would do thee no harm? A piece of earth, Brother Townsend. Just a few mangy acres, you think that's not precious. You think that comes cheap. Doesn't it? Not when you've cleared the land with your own two hands. Now, you understand me, Mr. Townsend. I built this town. I cleared this land. I came here as a very young man, 25 years ago, when there's nothing here but weeds and cold winters and Indians, but it's a place to live now. And it cost me. My father, scalped and screaming, my wife wasting away with fever, and two sons with arrows in their backs. Now, don't you tell me that land is cheap. Not this land. And I don't hate you, Townsend, or yours. Not worth the effort. But what I love, what belongs to me, that is worth the effort. You're an educated man, Mr. McComb. Can you conceive of another law, another right, the right of people to live in a place and uh, bring up their families without fear, without uh, jeopardy? Isn't that a bigger law? Not in my land. All right, let's talk about the land. How about people settling on it, proving it up, so that it's legally theirs? Not in my territory. You have quite a kingdom here, Mr. McComb. You'll be off my land by tomorrow night. If you're not, I'll burn you off or shoot you off, whichever it takes. And anyone else, believe it. 
Believe it as if it came from the Bible. And the Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth. The meek may not have inherited the earth, but there's no law against somebody helping them defend a few acres of it. You're one man, Colton, with one gun. I have 50 men and 50 guns. Once, just once. Not once, not ever. Mr. McComb, there will be no violence and no bloodshed. We will leave thy land tomorrow. That's belated wisdom, Brother Townsend, but it's wisdom nonetheless. Not wisdom, Mr. McComb, but once today, I allowed my own hungers and my own desperation to take me away from the Lord. I would have been a party to death, to murder, but no longer. There will be no death, neither from my hands or from anyone else's. What will we do? Where will we go? How will we live? We will go somewhere. We will do something. And we shall live in the eyes of God. This we will do, son. This we must do. Thee and Brother Loudon will take the wagon. I will walk. Forgive me, Mr. Colton. For what? Nothing to forgive? Unless you're ashamed of having a faith. And you have a faith, Mr. Townsend. I'm sorry, boy. I know what it's like to lose a father. All thee know is revenge. It is no vengeance of mine. I had no part in it. Simon. Simon, lad. I renounce all my oaths. I renounce all the tenets of my faith. I renounce any and all promises made to God. Is this not the custom, Mr. McComb? We draw together, isn't that the way it's done? I believe the applicable phrase from the scripture is an eye for an eye. Go ahead, boy. Would thee believe it, Mr. McComb? But though thee are a rich and a powerful man, 
Though thee own and control everything, though thee have the power of a king and, and own a kingdom. The man that lies dead at thy feet is thy superior. Much thy superior. The life that thee took was worth twenty of thine. Would thee believe that, Mr. Macomb? Don't do it, son. Don't do it. <laughs> Thank thee, O oh Lord, for making me hold my hand. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. You can believe this, Mr. Townsend. I wish it had been me. You can believe that. Mr. Loden, tomorrow we'll talk about the land. It's not a kingdom, Mr. Colton. It's far from it. It's a grubby little town with nothing to recommend it except it's a place to live. And men have died for that questionable privilege. I guess I was wrong, Mr. Macomb. Sometimes the meek do inherit the earth. <laughs>